Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ira Fay. This is my continuing coverage of the 2021 War of the Ring International Tournament. This is game one, round four. I am four and two. My opponent is also four and two. So we need to win both games. Either of us needs to win both games to be guaranteed to make it into the top cut. And if we go one and one, then we each have a wild card chance of making it into the top cut. My opponent is Bungie, who is currently fifth on the all-time rating list. I, for reference, am seventh right now. So he is a very strong opponent. And uh, quite honestly, I'm not entirely sure why we got paired against each other on challenge, but the pairing algorithm may be slightly bugged, but we just weren't going to mess with it and just go with what it said. So uh, this is going to be a challenging match and we'll see what happens. So uh, you can see round one, I've already uh, gotten the card set up in the rolls. He allocated zero eyes. I'm playing free. He preferred to play shadow game one, so that's fine. He um, allocated zero eyes and then I unfortunately rolled only one character die. So fortunately I did, with all these Palantirs, I did get two playable cards. So hopefully I'll cycle into more playable cards. And he only got one muster. So he's not going to get a minion round one. So think about what, what you would do for me. Would you plan on using a ring turn one, given that you could get a free movement out of it? So we can see sort of how things start. He starts off, I pass. Um, he starts off by drawing a shadow card, a strategy card. Um, and then he musters Sauron. So at this point, I'm now thinking pretty seriously about using a ring. He's still behind on musters. And so he, he, he rolled four, four movement. Um, so we'll, we'll see what comes of it. I continue to pass and he gets an early pits of Mordor, which allows him, oh, and you can see he, so he got hill trolls, pits of Mordor and Balrog. So those are, I think, pretty, pretty playable cards. He gets an early pits and, Al, um, musters and Dol Goldor, Moria and Mount Gundabad. So I go ahead and move for free because obviously that's great. And then he sends his army up north. So this is going to let him either if he wants to attack the elves or if he wants to attack track, attack the north um, to get somebody at war early so that he can get the witch king next turn. And I didn't get scouts turn one. And anyway, I'm not going to probably spend the time or uh, ring to to get somebody into Old Forest Road. So I think this makes a lot of sense with the early muster and to be able to just strike right at the north right away. And then he has these reinforcements from Mount Gundabad that can come in. Um, I think this is a good situation for him. Makes sense. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, at this point, knowing that um, he's not going to be able to get Saruman turn one, even if I give him a ring, maybe I should be thinking about using a ring. I go ahead and play my cards first, guards of the Citadel. Obviously, I'm hoping to draw into something that's going to help me up north. Um, I do draw into Riders of Theoden, which is good. That's another playable strategy card. He continues his movement in, and um, I go ahead and play Riders, and I get through day and night. So I'm stuck on additional strategy cards for Gandalf's ability, and I'll probably go ahead and play Vile, which is a great, I mean, this is a great card if I manage to make it tomorrow. All right, so he thinks about what to do here and ends up um, attacking Carrick. And um, I'm not sure why Carrick first or Dale first, but he's you know going to provoke the north towards war. Um, maybe it makes sense to attack Dale first if I just drew King Brand's men, which I, which is possible, unlikely, but possible. Um, why not attack Dale first? So that's that's interesting. He gets a hit, I get a hit. He moves somebody in. North is now one away from war. And I play Vile. 
So I guess, yeah, so he attacks Dale right here. So so I think if you're going to make this attack anyway, might as well attack Dale first in case I had happened to draw redraw King Rand's men. Um, so he misses, and um, the north is at war, and I retreat into Woodland Realm. And he only moved one unit into Dale. It's a little strange to me because this way he's not even threatening Erebor, and I might have been worried about getting getting this other regular into Erebor if he had moved everybody in. I mean, is he gonna is he worried that I'm gonna move somebody out? Yeah. So I ended up not using a ring. I hate giving Shadow an early ring, but for a free movement, a second movement, maybe. I think if it had been a third movement, I would have done it because that gets me past Moria. Um, maybe I expect to roll two movement next turn, and therefore, um, if I were at two at the end of this turn and I do two next turn, then my second movement isn't into Moria, which means I'm more likely to get past Moria. So there's a there's a strong argument there for maybe using a ring. I was I was thinking, well, maybe he's not going to roll three musters next turn because if he gets three musters, then he can get um, Sauron. He can get the Witch King and um, Saruman if he gets three musters. But his chances of getting three musters on seven dice, he's going to have to allocate one. So he only has six dice. His expected number of musters on a given die is one third. So that's he's expected to get about two musters next turn. And so that ring could really turn into a third muster. And I had file, so I got to play a card and draw a card, which is nice as Gandalf. So I'm not sure. That's that's really a, a, a good question to think about. Comment below if you would have used a ring or if you would have um, just played the, the file. Okay, so next round... He allocates an eye, and he rolls three three musters. So obviously that's really good. He's going to be able to get um, he's going to be able to get Saruman and the Witch King, and I get um, two Palantirs. And unfortunately, even with the two extra cards that I drew, I now have no playable cards, and um, that's really a bummer for Gandalf. Um, so. He, I, I draw a card because what else am I going to do? Maybe I'm going to draw into um, Thranduil's Archers or um, I'm looking for Dane Ironfoot's Guard um, and or um, a card that lets me like draw two more uh, strategy cards. So I get Power of Tom Bombadil. Not useful um, particularly because the North is already at war. So, I mean, it's okay, but nothing, it is actually playable, but not really for any large effect. I mean, I guess it protects the Shire a little bit, but it's not, not a particularly exciting card to draw at this point. All right. Um, <laughs> he makes a joke, Gandalf sheds a tear, which I think is funny. Um, okay. So he um, musters Isengard, which is correct. And then I move the Fellowship and he misses. And... Part of me, I don't know, it might have been nice to get Gandalf there. Um, and then he decides to bring in uh, reinforcements before attacking into um, Woodland Realm because there's no real rush. And I guess maybe that's the that's the thinking of leaving these leaving this army here. Um, so yeah, m maybe a good play if if the plan is it's going to be more efficient to go one, two, three into Old Forest Road and then four. So that's four attacks. This would be one and then one, two, three, four. So that's, sorry, five. Sorry, I was comparing if he had moved everybody into Dale and then um, he needed to bring these units in, then... Um, it would take an extra movement to merge everybody up in Wooden Realm, but he is threatening Erebor. So I don't know. I guess I guess this this does make sense. I'm I would be wary as Shadow about leaving these entirely unguarded while the North is already at war. Um 
yes, he does have time. I don't have all, you know, I don't have six dice. So, um, and he is trying to take care of this area, but these units can muster up relatively quickly. Um, and if the elves are going to go to war too, it's not, it's not so hard to, to get up to Mount Gundabad. So that's something to, for him to think about. All right. Um, so he plays hill trolls here to, um, power up these units in Moria and, um, I'm thinking here, so I have through a day and a night, um, and I'm thinking about using a ring to move with this palantir so that either he, um, I mean, he has very intelligently waited to muster his minions so that if I lose Gandalf, um, with a movement, he can delay his minions until his last die and he'll not get both this turn, but, um, I won't get Gandalf. So, um, I think I'm thinking about using a ring to try and move. And then if I lose Gandalf, I delay him a, a die. Um, or I'm thinking, well, I could separate somebody with this will of the West, get them to North Downs and then threaten through a day and a night up to Mount Gundabad. And he'll have to, again, um, not get his, not, not get his eighth die. So I don't know what was best. And then of course I could just, um, play power of Tom Bombadil with this, um, Palantir and then move normally, um, or move first. And then if I get Gandalf, then, uh, use Strider to hide with the Palantir. So I don't know what exactly is best here. What I ended up doing, th think, feel free to comment in the comments below what, what you would do in this situation. I ended up using a ring to move and upon reflection, I'm not sure that that's the best play. I think, I think probably if I'm willing to use rings to move, like why didn't I use one last turn? I guess there was good logic for not using it last turn, hoping that he wasn't going to roll three, um, musters. Um, so, okay, maybe that was okay. But then why am I, why am I spending it now when he, it's going to delay it's not actually going to get me Gandalf. Um, I should assume that he's going to play properly, not muster his minion, and then I'm not going to get Gandalf until next turn. So better to not give him a ring. Um, you know, go ahead and move again. That's fine. Doing fine on the on corruption with the fellowship, but um, use the pal use the will of the West to move and let him get nine dice. I mean, it's sad he's going to have nine dice, but hopefully I'll get Gandalf soon. All right, so that's what I ended up doing. He, um, he hits me and, uh, I get revealed and obviously I, I didn't want to get revealed there. Um, it's three movements. It's into Moria, you know, that's, that's just, uh, you know, 50, 50 chance. Basically it's, it's actually only seven, 25%, around 25% chance that I get revealed on that move about 50, 50 that I'm going to get hit. And then, um, an additional 50 50 that I'm going to get revealed. So that's bad luck at that point. One reveal given how the fellowship is doing, given that that in particular was an eye, I decide to go into Moria and, and draw the extra tile. Um, you know, he's moving pretty quickly. Um, I'm feeling okay about the fellowship's corruption level. So I take the risk. I keep Gandalf in and then he gets a two and there I lose Gandalf to the two. And, and now he's in a bind about getting his minion or not. And he doesn't, he just moves armies, um, which I think makes a lot of sense. And, and then I hide the fellowship with, with that. And my thinking is, uh, you know, there were a lot of things I could do there. I'm, I'm a little worried about, you know, these armies, um, moving in. It's possible he can muster up quickly. I want to get these guys to Westham net before, before he comes in. And so, um, but I decided to hide there because I don't want him to be able to play something like Orc Patrol or, um, Isildur's Bane or Foul Thing from the Deep on his first action before I moved out of Moria, because then he could get a, he could get, um, a tile by revealing me in Moria, I'll have to hide and then I'd have to move and he could get me on the way out. So, um, you know, I, I don't know exactly 
if that's right, but but I think it prob probably does make sense to hide there so that I can move right away at the beginning of your next turn. Um, okay, so he gets Saruman, and I let's see what has he drawn anything interesting. He got he has the Palantir, he has Balrog, and um, you know the Fellowship is in Moria right now, so I'm uh, it's interesting if he's gonna if he's gonna play that or not. So he allocates an eye, he doesn't roll any, and um, I luckily get um, a Will of the West. It's only 50-50 for me, so it's it's certainly lucky that I got a Will of the West after losing Gandalf like that. Um, and I start off by moving, and he only, um, even though he would have had two re-rolls, he only had one eye. So um, he misses, and um, then he musters a unit here and I guess I'm not entirely sure what what his plan is for that I guess he's planning on coming in coming into Lorien um, with this army it's a little surprising that that this army is strong enough to take out Lorien but I guess he has I guess he has Balrog so he's thinking he's thinking that it's worth it I don't know what the actual odds are and if you have the fellowship in Moria and an eye tile has already been drawn, so your odds of getting an eye are even lower. Um, does it really not make sense to use this Palantir to play play Balrog? I don't know. Um, also, like, what about using this um, character die to play Palantir when um, we know that I want to use this Will of the West for... Um, for Gandalf. So you're basically guaranteed, almost guaranteed to get my second, my second ring this, you know, on turn three. I don't know. I would, I would definitely consider using, using this, um, character to play the Palantir. All right. Um, so he musters up and I guess he's going into Lorien and then he starts moving armies. This army is in position. This army is basically in position. Um, and this is nice. Uh, he's done, he's done a good job here. Um, yeah. All right. So he moves armies again and, um, then he attacks into Lorien and I go into siege. I think that makes sense. And then he... Uh, I go ahead and get Gandalf because why not? And he attacks Woodland Realm. Now I could have, I could have considered um, doing something like scouts into Carrick, like fight a field battle, scouts into Carrick, um, scouts into sorry into Western Mirkwood, and then. You know, if I had an extra movement, take Carrick, but um, because he doesn't, he doesn't have um, our army movements right here, and then I could like muster up in Carrick and threaten Mount Gundabad. Like that could be interesting, um, but I don't have the. He has a ring. I don't have army movements. You know, it doesn't. It doesn't actually work that way. But I, I think it probably makes sense to uh, fight Woodland Realm first. Because then I, I can't even pull those shenanigans. I mean, whatever. It doesn't matter because I, I didn't have the army movements. and it does, So it's fine. Um, so, all right. This is interesting. So I have I have two musters here. Um, so think about, think about what we would do. I just undid it. So I have two musters. I'm definitely using one muster. Um, and then I have a second muster to use. Who do you muster? What do you do? Um, so do you, like the elves are not quite at war yet, so I can't put any units in Rivendell. Um, I could put them at war, but why? Um, I can play Red Arrow, um, or I could muster somebody towards war. So who, who would you muster? This would be a great thing. This is, this is actually a really key moment in the game. So this would be a great thing to think about. Pause the video. Um, who would you muster? Turn three with two muster dice, red arrow 
in your hand. You also have scouts. So, so there are a few options. One is Gondor to get prepared for at some point Corsairs, um, or just generally, you know, getting more units are down here. Another option I would say is Ro Rohan, um, where you could, uh, with Red Arrow, assuming he gets the Witch King, with Red Arrow, you could get them two away from, or like two down toward war. Um, or possibly the dwarves. You can muster the dwarves once and then leave this unit in um, Iron Hills. And then if he tacks into Iron Hills and takes Iron Hills with, and you can play scouts, then uh, you could get an elite into Erebor. So all of those are options. What I ended up doing um, was Rohan. So, and then, um, and then he got the Witch King here. And this is really minor. I mean, I think he has, does he have something to play? So he's going to end with, I guess, Palantir of Orthanc. Um, so I guess that's why he wants to get Witch King here so that I can't use a ring this turn, this, this muster, which is, I guess, somewhat useless. Um, but because he got the Witch King, Gondor activates, and then I'm able to play um, the Red Arrow. So I don't know. Um, and then he ends with the Palantir. I still think that I would have, um, I would have played this. I would have used the sword, the character die to play the Palantir. And then I would have used a ring on one of those musters, but all right. So I end the round with Rohan one away from war and he's trying to, he's trying to take Lorien. I guess he's not worried about playing the Balrog as a um, card effect, even though the fellowship is in Moria. So that's, that's an interesting choice. Um, I probably, I mean, given how things are going, I, I probably still would play it to try and, to try and draw there to get the extra tile. Um, so this is interesting. I think it turns out, in retrospect, mustering Rohan towards war here um, twice was probably a mistake. I think once, maybe, was okay with the Red Arrow, um, but I think then I could have done Gondor, the other one. I could have split them. Um, I think that was prob probably the better play, so that I'm more prepared for um, an eventual Corsairs. But it's hard, it's hard to know. Um, I'll be interested to read the comments and hear what you think. All right, so we go to next round. He draws Isildur's Bane. Um, I'm happy to make it out of Moria without getting a, a second tile drawn. Um, and I discard an Ent card here. I don't know if that's the right thing to discard. I feel like it's going to be a while before he moves out of Orthanc. And I like Swords in Eriador because... Um, you know, the North is already at war, so that unit could be useful. He's completely left this area open. Um, so, you know, maybe, maybe this is a chance. Maybe maybe I should be thinking about trying to go more fully military victory at this point because, you know, he's left Dol Golder open. He's left Moria open. He's left Mount Gundabad open. Um you know, that, uh, this could be a good time to shift, but all right. So he puts an eye, he rolls an extra eye and I get a bunch of, um, musters. And I was definitely thinking about playing, I will go alone to be able to get Aragorn here. Um, but I need to use the will of the West to get rid of the Palantir. Um, or a ring and some other die to get rid of the Palantir, but then I won't be able to both get rid of the Palantir and use I Will Go Alone to get Aragorn and Minas Tirith. So I don't know. What what would you do here? He has a ring, and so he could theoretically play two cards with a Palantir effect, drawing two cards from the Palantir of Orthanc. So would you use your Will of the West to get rid of the Palantir? Would you use I will go alone and the Palin and the Will of the West to get Aragorn, but leave the Palantir of Orthanc? Or do you maybe use a ring, like maybe use the Will of the West to get rid of the Palantir and then a ring to move? Could do that. 
Um, yeah, these are pretty tough decisions. This is not a role that I'm happy to see. Um, all right, so I um, get rid of the Palantir. And I maybe that's wrong. You know, uh, he has a lot of cards. He has three cards. I don't want to give him a bunch of free card draws. And I'm hoping that... Um, you know, this stronghold might be able to hold out. This stronghold might be able to hold out for a while. I feel like I still have a decent amount of time. Rohan's going to be a pretty tough nut to crack. Um, all right. So he moves, um, moves Nazgul here. I guess that makes sense. Um, I play this to cycle. I would love to get a reinforcement for Woodland Realm, a reinforcement for Lorien, a uh, reinforcement for Erebor. Um, any of those would be great. Um, I get a reinforcement for Rivendell. Not so useful, unfortunately. And um, he attacked Lorien here. And now the elves are at war, and he plays the Balrog here. So, um, you know, he's expected to get one and a half casualties here and um and he gets three so you know I, this army i don't i don't know exactly what the odds are of this army even with balrog being able to take out um lorian i mean he does have a bunch of leadership there so you know maybe it's possible i, I don't know exactly what the odds are but um he ends up taking it out and i do zero hits to him so you know, he, he continues once and I do zero hits. So that's, that's really unfortunate for me, very efficient for him. Um, and I really wanted, um, Gladriel, e even if she's gonna, you know, get defeated, inflict some casualties, last a little bit longer. Um, and then he moves Nazgul again and goes to attack Woodland Realm. And maybe there's some argument to be said for cycling this card earlier so that I could um, maybe try to draw into a reinforcement. But at this point, I wanted to use these to muster up Rohan um, and get, get Rohan to war and then muster up Rohan. So um, he's able to defeat or come very... Yeah, does he defeat? No, so he doesn't, he doesn't defeat... Uh, Woodland Realm on that attack, um, but he inflicts um, two casualties. So yeah, m maybe that's pretty unlucky with um, Desperate Battle. He he certainly should have gotten two. I don't know what the actual what the actual average would have been considering everything. Um, he did get he did get two sixes on the first one, which is slightly above average. Um, but yeah, I guess he sh he probably should have been able to inflict one more casualty, or actually probably two more casualties. Um, so that was a little unlucky, though I did time the I did time the um, advantageous position properly against um, the desperate battle. All right, so I go ahead and muster Rohan. He uh, gets the south south rounds and Easterlings toward war, and he plays Isildur's Bane here. I don't know exactly why he waited so long to do that. Um, yeah, and then he gets a three. So, you know, that's pretty good. I think revealing me is also good, but I have Strider, so I think three might be the best result there. Um, I use the army muster to start getting this army around. You know, I have through a day and a night, so I'm thinking about ways to threaten Dol Guldur, um, possibly even threatening Orthanc. These these armies could merge in. Um, I have... A, I have a decent number of options still at this point. It would be so great if this army and Lorien had been whittled down a little bit more. Um, I could I could go up and either retake it or just generally they wouldn't be as much of a threat. Um, okay, so he gets South Rounds and Easterlings all the way to war. Uh, and now he's drawn Corsairs of Umbar. I don't know that yet, but obviously that is pretty bad for me. And that is the consequences of having mustered Rohan. So at this point, I got a couple of Rohan musters. Um, if instead I had gotten Gondor to war and had gotten a couple of Gondor musters, um, I would be much more prepared 
for Corsairs. And so I think that's why in the end, um, you know, maybe if I had gotten six dice and gotten Aragorn that turn, um, I could be threatening a military victory. And if I want to really give up on the fellowship at this point and just like focus all out on military, maybe then Rohan is a good choice. Um, but you know, he's moved no, no, no Mordor armies. Um, and he's been making efficient use of his armies up in the north and Moria and Mount and, and Dol Guldur. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't know at this point in the game, he is, you know, he's probably going to take Woodland Realm, Erebor, he should be able to take it with what's left of, of these two, these two armies. And, um, now that he has Corsairs, he's going to, he's going to be able to take Dol Amroth. So it's looking pretty, pretty smooth for him. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly what what I could have done. I think I think uh, Gondor is really the big, the big difference there. So if you earlier in the game, uh, on turn three, had said Gondor, then you might have survived longer than me. Um, all right. So I get very little movement, and again, I, I don't I don't get a will of the West here. And so I could have seriously considered again, I will go alone into Minas Tirith and um, get Aragorn here, but I didn't roll a Will of the West, so it doesn't make sense to, to send him there. Um, I haven't given up on the Fellowship yet. Maybe it would make sense to pass here and just just wait a little bit, see what's coming. And then if I want to go full military, and give up on the fellowship, I could consider that. Um, I do have through a day and a night, um, and that extra that extra attack this turn could make could make a pretty big difference. So I wonder if actually this movement right here um, is a mistake, given how relatively quickly his military is rolling. He didn't roll any eyes, so you know that is a good time to move the fellowship. But he's basically at seven, or well, maybe not seven. Maybe Erebor can hold out. Um, but he has he has a good amount of stuff here. All right, so um, he hits me on this movement and then reveals me. So you know that's a little disappointing. Um, and then he attacks Woodland Realm using Orc Patrol and. You know, that's an interesting choice. Um, I like these cards for um, for slowing down the Fellowship, but I think he's reading the situation properly, which is that... Oh, and particularly that two eyes are gone. So, like, that's a relatively safe draw because I've already pulled out two eyes. So I think, you know, this is... I should have taken this as a hint. I mean, maybe maybe I read it as a mistake, but but I think I should take it as a hint that his military is just, you know, rolling along and he's just not worried about the fellowship. And I think that's a great read on his part. He, he shouldn't be worried about the fellowship. They're going way too slow, uh, slowly relative to the speed of his military. Um, all right, so he uh, defeats Woodland Realm there. It did take him one extra die. Um and then he musters a unit into North Rune, and um, armies move in. He gets, and then he goes back to Umbar. So I'm like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm basically, I'm really close to lost already, because he has. Um, f this is going to be five victory points up here. He has Lorien, that's seven, and Dol Amroth is going to be nine. And then he can get to he can get to Pilar gear pretty easily, or these guys can you know I don't know maybe they can get Edoras, um, but but Pilar gear I'm not probably going to be able to hold Pilar gear. So at this point I'm thinking I need to do something with this army, right? Like this army needs to either come and threaten a military victory and hope that um, he's slow enough in Erebor and um, Dol Amroth. I draw into Kyrdin's ships, maybe. Um, so this is worrisome. And this is a good argument for 
having passed on the fellowship movement earlier, even though you're so tempted with one eye. Um, I think I have to read the situation and see that he's quite, he's, he's really actually quite close given how few eyes he's rolled and how efficiently his military is moving. Um, yeah. So I think that's a little bit of a mistake there. I should have, should have passed. It's hard not to move the fellowship with one eye. Um, but it might've been, it might've been right in this situation. All right. So, um, I muster, uh, and then he goes into Erebor. I retreat into siege. I play Aomer. So this is, you know, this is a great, you know, good, solid army. Um, and then he moves armies. Why not? That's the first <laughs> Mordor uh, army movement of the game. And he's not even going to, he's not even going to need that army uh, to get his 10 points. So, so he has a great uh, army in Erebor and, um, you know, I don't know exactly where I move. I, I, it's pretty tough for me at this point. Um, Lorien is a good idea to potentially retake it. Um, though I would rather get this army all the way up there. Um, and it would be great now that the dwarves are going to be at war to maybe get moving with, with these guys. Um, these guys can come up and threaten a military victory, but the reality is he's going to get to 10 before I'm going to get to four or even at the, you know, the same time as I get to four. So I need to be thinking about what can I recapture? And what I really want to recapture is Woodland Realm. I want this army to be depleted a lot in Erebor, and I want to come up and retake Woodland Realm and threaten Dol Guldur along the way. Um, so that's sort of what I'm thinking, and I wish that I had one extra um, army movement here. But of course, it is nice to move the Fellowship. Um, all right, so when I move to Etten Moors, he musters into Dol Golder and Mount Gundabad. I think that makes sense. He's playing, um, you know, for through a day and a night. And then I go ahead and play through a day and a night here. Maybe I should have just done a normal army movement to Parth Celebrant, leaving through a day and a night as an option for next turn, if I'm really thinking I'm going up to Woodland Realm. But kind of what I'm thinking is, you know, maybe I can get a military victory if, um, you know, Erebor goes slowly enough. Um, Dol, Dol, Gold, uh, Dol Amroth holds, holds out at least, well, I don't know, probably Dol Amroth he can take in one die, but Erebor might take more than one die. And um, he might not have enough attacks, right? Because um, Erebor is one, Dol Amroth is two, three, Lamadon, Pelargir, that's five dice. You know, he probably is going to get five attacks, um, but it might take more than one die to take Erebor. So I, I guess I'm thinking I want to set myself up for a military victory. I want him to have to defend that a little bit. And so therefore I used through a day and a night to get to Dol Guldur so I can threaten it. All right. So that's what happens. And then he plays Grand. So, you know, obviously I didn't know that he had Grand. That's a great play on his part. And um, we have this big battle in Erebor. And I don't know exactly what the averages are. Um, we're pretty friendly for most of it. And then um, we end up with he has uh, five units and I have two. And so he's going to be able to just reinforce and take it out. Um, all right. So I get another Ent card at this point. So now Ents can start to be threatening a little bit. And... Um, He has to allocate one eye because I did move. And um, then he rolls zero eyes again. And I get, you know, I, I you know, this is a good roll, perfect, perfectly good roll. Um, but the problem is I don't have quite enough attacks to get up to Woodland Realm, right? Because I can go one, two, three, four to get to Woodland Realm and then five to attack. Um, but I didn't, I didn't actually get enough, um, attacks even with, 
a, a ring. And so at this point, I have to calculate, well, he's going to take Erebor, he's going to take Dol Amroth, and then he can get to Pilargir. I didn't draw Kyrdin's ships, so, you know, I'm, I'm definitely in trouble here. Um, maybe if I had moved to Parth Cele Celebrant, um, Celebrant, Parth Celebrant, I think it's a hard C, uh, Parth Celebrant, uh, last turn, and then I got to use my Through a Day and a Night to get to North Anduin Vale, then I can go one, two, three, and then use a ring to attack and retake Woodland Realm. And that would have been better. So, you know, I, I think that is a pretty key mistake. It's, it's hard to see it. Um, and also last turn, um, if I just hadn't moved the fellowship at all and instead had that extra character die to, um, to just move with armies. So, so either one of those I think would have been, um, you know, would have been better. So it's, it's hard to realize you need to, I think as the, as the free people's player, when shadow is doing really well on military, when Lorien fell so quickly, um, and I've managed to, and I didn't get a lot of character movement early. And instead I had musters, you know, I, I think I used those musters reasonably well to get this threatening Rohan army. Um, but I didn't quite set myself up to use them well enough because what I'm going to have to do is go after Lorien. Because with all of these dice, he rolled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven with a ring, possibly eight if he has some sort of, you know, um, black captain commands or ring wraiths or abroad. He, he possibly has eight attacks this turn. And with eight attacks, he can certainly go one into Erebor, two to take Erebor, three into Dol Amroth, four to take Dol Amroth, five, six um Lamadon Pilar gear, right? So he can he's very likely to be able to um take this and these these Mordor armies could be could be coming in. Um so I can't I don't know, maybe I can use if he once he plays um Corsairs, maybe I can um defend uh Pilar gear uh with this army in Minas Tirith. But I'm in I'm in pretty dire situation right here. All right, so I start off um, because I'm a little worried about day without dawn. I start off using my will of the west to go after Dimral Dale because I'm thinking that I need to be able to recapture Lori in this turn. Maybe that's wrong of me, but. By my calculation, he can get to 10 this turn. Arab, yeah, maybe maybe I should have passed here. I don't know. I'd, I'd be interested in comments on this. Would you act right away to make sure that you don't have to use a ring to take Lorien um, and to threaten Moria with a military victory in case his, in case his um, battles go poorly? Um, or do you basically pass a little bit and then possibly send this army north, assuming he's not going to win this turn. And then this army can be used to retake, retake the north. Yeah, I don't know. So he musters into um, Moria and um, I go ahead and besiege Lorien. I think that's also probably a mistake. I don't know why I'm in a rush to take it. Um, he's, he can't really reinforce it effectively because it already has five units in it. Maybe he could do like the, the shadow is shadow lengthens or whatever. It lets him move three from Dol Golder into Lorien. But you know, that's not, I think I should just wait on that because now he has options to get into Helm's Deep. He could, you know, muster, muster, Fords of Eisen, Hel Helm's Deep. And then I only have four units in there. So I think I should just wait on that. Um, I actually accidentally misclicked on old forest road. Um, okay. So he goes ahead and moves armies because he needs to get this Erebor thing settled. 
Um, and he takes out Erebor with one more attack using Great Host. And now he's up to seven. And then he does Corsairs into Dol Amroth. That's predictable. And um, now we can see that he's in this situation where he can attack. That's one. Lamadon is two. Pelargir is three. So, you know, if I had waited, then I could possibly have this big army from Minas Tirith into Pelargir. And then he wouldn't be able to maybe take it with whatever army is left over from Dol Amroth. Yeah, I don't know exactly. I don't know exactly what was best here. Um, he plays Ring Wraiths are abroad. He, he did have it. And then he takes out Dol Amroth in a single attack. And so now this army would be fighting this army. And I don't know. I don't know what was what was best, but he, he definitely can win this turn at this point. So, and I'm now committed to retaking Lorien. I don't know exactly what was, what was best here. I think what was best was Gondor should have already been at war. I would, I should have had more units into Dol Amroth and then I wouldn't have needed to take all of these armies up to Lorien. Um, or if I do take these armies up to Lorien, then um, last turn, get them all the way up to Woodland Realm instead of having to fight this giant, this really tough army in Lorien. Maybe I'm big enough to take it, but that's pretty rough. All right, so um, he's at nine now, and I attack right here. Maybe, given how badly things are going, I should separate some companions using I will go alone first, so I have one more leadership and I have some captains of the West in um, in this battle. I don't do that, but that's something to consider. And then I have Sudden Strike too. So I'm only, I'm only rolling four dice here instead of five. It's slightly inefficient. Um, and I get a few hits, but he gets quite a few hits also. And then in the end, I have to use um, a second Sudden Strike I obviously wanted to save dead men because I had, I will go alone plus dead men. It's a nice combo, but, um, you know, I don't think the reason why I did that was one, I think I needed it to take out this army. And two, I didn't think that dead men would let me hold, um, Pilar gear anyway against this army It's just too big, too big of an army. So he did, he did a really nice job attacking my strongholds that were weak. I just, um, didn't, have a chance to reinforce Lorien. I managed to get lucky and get one extra unit, a regular and a leader into Woodland Realm, but it wasn't enough. Um, and Erebor, I wasn't able to reinforce at all. So, and then Dol Amroth, I wasn't able to reinforce at all. So, you know, if Shadow is able to move quickly and attack all of these strongholds before they've been reinforced at all, then uh, they can win pretty quickly, right? Because this is turn six. And unless I retake Lorien, he has a military victory on turn six. That is fast. Um, he didn't roll, like, he rolled very few eyes, and that helped. Um, so, all right. Um, all right, so I do manage to take out um, Lorien, recapture it, but I'm left with four regulars. So that was... You know, that army started off with 12 hit points, and now it's down to four. Um, you know, it's enough to hold Lorien for a while, but it's not enough to sort of go out and do something else, probably. Um, all right, and Gondor is at war. That's because he took um, Dol Amroth, and that means he can get the mouth. Um, so he has the mouth on turn six, which is, I think, another reason why... Maybe I shouldn't have mustered Rohan because otherwise Rohan would not be at war. I, he would not have attacked it yet. Um, Gondor would have been at war, but not Rohan. So I think that's another argument in favor of um, waiting, uh, waiting on Rohan, especially because I got enough. I got enough musters. I was I would have been able to reinforce Helm's Deep, make that a you know a pretty hard target. I would have been able to make Dol Amroth a pretty hard target. Now maybe, you know, he would have been able to take it anyway, and then I wouldn't have been able to retake Lorien. But then probably at that point, I would have enough to hold Pilar gear. Um, and then he'd be at nine, but he wouldn't be at 10. And it would be a little tricky for him to get to, 
to 10 because going after Pilargir at that point, dead men could matter. And at that point, um, you know, it's not obvious because Rohan is pretty solid. So it's not obvious exactly where his 10th victory point is coming from. And it, depending on how badly this battle goes, it's possible I could move in and, and retake it um, through Gondor. Um, you know, I don't think Rohan was a totally crazy choice, but then like don't have to attack into Lorien. Like, get yourself up to Woodland Realm. Because if I retake Woodland Realm, then he has some serious problems. Because if this army comes out of Erebor and starts to take it, like, I can muster into Woodland Realm a bunch. And I can retake Dale and Carrick. And then this is quite formidable. And I could then even retake Erebor. So, all right. Um, Maybe he could have gotten five regulars into Woodland Realm, but one, that would take him two extra movements, and two, that's better. I'd rather take, I'd rather fight four regulars than take, than fight two elites and with a leadership and three regulars. So having to expend that army on Lorien was, you know, pretty unfortunate. All right, but if I hadn't, he would have won that turn. Okay, so at this point, you know, what, what can I do? I hide the fellowship. I don't even know what, you know, what my possible chances are. I'm thinking about playing I Will Go Alone here to to get, um, you know, a, 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 a companion in Fangorn. Um, I don't really know what, you know, what my chances are. He's going to be coming into Helm's Deep. And because I've mustered Rohan so fully, um, there's really not that much I'm going to be able to do to defend it. Um my thinking is try moving the fellowship, have him roll a bunch of eyes. Maybe I can still get some, some military sneakiness, um, with Lorien. Um, you know, these armies can potentially come into Moria, um, or to Mount Gundabad. He's just not defending this very much. The other thing I'm thinking about is if I have tons of time is go up to Mount Gundabad and then come around this way. But you know, that's just, that's just too slow. Um, I would have to get really lucky. I mean, I don't really know what I can do to salvage this game at this point, um, given how well the battles have gone for him in general um, and just how slow the fellowship is moving. You know, there have been a lot of reveals along the way. All right, so I go ahead and use another ring to move. Um, maybe that's dumb. I don't know. Um, he hits me and then I decide to draw random because at this point I'm like, well, I'm, things are going so badly. Maybe I'll get lucky and get a hobbit and then I can have a companion in Fangorn after all. And then that will turn on ends. So that's what happened. Um, it doesn't really matter. Getting revealed is bad. I'm, I'm just too far, too far away from Mount Doom. This bought me some time, but not enough time. I needed to get up to Woodland Realm. That would buy me a lot more time. All right, um, so we go on to next round, and, um, you know, another perfectly reasonable role. Um, he gets, you know, good, good movement. He's rolling 10 dice at this point, so um, I muster a little bit because I'm, it's, it's clear that he's going to go after Helm's Deep. Right, so I need to muster into Helm's Deep to be prepared in case he has he has swarm of bats or something like that. Then I want to be able to muster and and he takes out. I'm, I've been holding scouts the whole game, right? I've been holding scouts to be able to retreat these guys in. But if he has swarm of bats and he manages to defeat these guys, I want to be prepared with another muster. Um, I'm also thinking about ways to. Um, reinforce it. It's not going to be enough. I'm going to need to bring some companions in. So my plan is, you know, I will go alone into Helm's Deep with some number of companions to try and hold um, Helm's Deep. All right. So um, he moves Nazgul. Um, I play I will go alone now. And I use the Will of the West because I guess I don't want to risk Day Without Dawn. And I know at this point... Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to, my dice are sort of accounted for, right. I'm going to hide and move or muster if I have to. Um, and I'm going to play Ents if he gives me the chance. 
So I know that I'm probably not. I, these these dice are flexible enough. I don't need to risk day without dawn um, any more than I already have. So I send three. <clears throat> I don't know if this is right. I send all the captains except for um, Strider. The fellowship is in you know really big trouble. But if I can hold Helm's Deep um, for a while. Um, you know, even if I can hold the Helm's Deep for a while, I still don't know what I'm going to do, right? Like this, this army would have to, um, really make some serious progress, um, into, to, to get a military victory. I, I just don't know. I, I, at this point I'm feeling pretty lost. Um, but I know that I have to hold Helm's Deep. So that's why I got to hold Helm's Deep. That's why I sent them. Um, so he attacks Fords. I play scouts. I retreat them in. He didn't have um, Swarm of Bats. And he moves in everyone. Now, you know, I think that probably makes sense. You To, to be safe from Ents, you have to keep back so many that it makes it pretty unlikely that you can take this. Um, so I think this is absolutely the correct play. Um, I do have Ents, so Saruman goes away, which is nice. Um, and then he attacks Helm's Deep which makes sense. And then he moves um, the um, Nazgul again to be able to get a full um, contingent here. And my force pool in... Um, my force pool is just pretty bad because I, I've used up all but one of my Rohan units. So I don't have an easy way of taking advantage of, of anything here. Um You know, uh, it's just not, it's just not clear what I should be, what I should be doing. I think I'm just losing, but if you have suggestions about things I could be doing on turn seven, uh, let me know. Um, so he has dreadful spells. He hits one, um, which is pretty close to what we'd expect. And then I decide to muster in Westham net. And my, my thinking is last ditch effort, I'm going to move um, this guy into Fords of Eisen, and I'm going to move this guy, uh, um, Gandalf into Dimmerald Dale, and then I will, um, and then I will hope that he rolls a bazillion eyes and I'm able to take Orthanc and Moria, um, before he, um, has a chance to get back to 10. That's, that's my current best plan. Um, so... Yeah, not not the best plan. I'm thinking. Uh, I'm I'm gonna. I'm about to use a ring to um, turn this character die into a army muster or army movement. And I wonder if I had not used the um, will of the West. I thought that I knew everything that I was gonna do on this turn, but I think I used the will of the West to play. Um, what did I end up doing? I will go alone. Yeah. So if I had instead used this character die to play I Will Go Alone, then I wouldn't have had to use my last ring. Um, so that's an interesting argument. If you're going to risk Day Without Dawn, then go ahead and risk it. And and therefore, I should have used the character die. And that would have saved me a ring. So minor, like we're playing on really long odds at this point. Um, but you got to take your chances where you can. So um, I muster more in Gondor, thinking maybe these guys can come up and defend Edoras or Pilargir, depending on which way he goes, though it's going to be impossible for me to defend both because he has giant armies that can come into Pilargir. There's probably going to be a decent amount left of the Helm's Deep army. I mean, hopefully Helm's Deep will hold, but um, I only have four units left. It's just not enough. Even, even with captains, um, it's not enough. Maybe if I could get Gandalf in there with here or something like that and then he doesn't have any leadership maybe if i if i get a bunch of heroic deaths maybe um but he's attacking uh this turn so he gets an extra elite in there um i do notice that he has fighting uruk -hai. so um given that he had fighting uruk -hai, maybe it makes sense to keep more behind in orthanc because that way this card remains active and that's a pretty powerful um card um, 
All right, so I go ahead and go with my gambit, and then he uses um, this last muster to go into to make this um, hard for me to take, um, which I think makes sense. He's not he's not really in any rush, um, and I think it's also correct to not attack Fords of Eisen because I could have another scouts, and then I would be able to take or think guaranteed. All right, so he musters. This flashes. And um, I think uh, we failed to notice it. Oh no, he did. All right, so he remembered to he remembered to remove a die for Saruman, so that's nice. And then um, he rolls and he gets three eyes, and you know, a couple a couple musters, but he has the mouth, so you know this is he still has five attacks here. It's not gonna. You know, he's going to be able to take Helm's Deep and then hit, go into Edoras. I just don't have the units to stop him. I have to hope, beyond hope, that um, Helm's Deep is going to hold. Uh, also, I don't know at the time, but he has Shadows on the Misty Mountain. So, you know, <laughs> uh, my my hope of uh, military victory is pretty low. Um, so I go ahead and attack Moria. He plays Shadows on Misty Mountain, and I know that I have... Uh, almost certainly lost the game, though I've known that for a bit of time. He plays uh, We Come to Kill and is able to inflict a good amount of casualties and just, you know, this is just a giant, giant army. Um, companions can only do so much. And he's left with that. I managed to attack Orthanc and um, it doesn't matter at this point because he is guaranteed to be able to take Edoras. I can't do anything to stop him. Um, I play for fun and play the Ents to defeat the single regular in Orthanc, and um, he moves into Edoras. I move for the last time and um, get revealed. So that's the end of the game. Um, you know, turn eight military victory, even when I you know, did not move the fellowship very far and devoted quite a lot of dice to, um, military, um, mustering up in Rohan, but I was, I was just not able to defend the places very well that he attacked. So, you know, in the end, Helm's Deep went under siege, even with, um, you know, it did, it did have five regulars, um, but, and, and three companions, but no elites, you know? So if I had, I think, hardened Dol Amroth with some early musters in Gondor instead of Rohan, he wouldn't have had the mouth. And um, it's quite possible that these these attacks could have held a lot longer. Um, you know, the fellowship was just too slow. Um, so, and when I went ahead and did the counterattack, you know, I think I could have gone up to Woodland Realm had I, had I played that a little differently in the middle game. And then that could have really slowed him down a lot too. But overall, the fellowship is really just far away, really struggling. And, um, yeah, this was a, this was a great game for shadow and, uh, a tough game for the free peoples. If you have comments on what you would have done differently, um, I welcome them. Um, so we're going to play our, our rematch at some point and hopefully I'll, I'll have a chance to, to get my, uh, my revenge, but, uh, you know, Bungie's great player is great game. And he played, he played really well, played, played everything, uh, quite nicely. So that's the game. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much. Oh, let me show you statistics. Um, so, you know, minus four on eyes is obviously, um, you know, good <laughs> for shadow and, uh, minus five on, um, character dice is obviously bad for free. Um, so, you know, <laughs> that, that happens sometimes. Um, when we were, when we were looking earlier, it said when I was looking at the game with him, it said that he was minus on sixes. Um, but now looking at it, I wonder, did, did things get reversed? Is this actually, I think it's possible that there's, um, that this is, this is shadow dice, right? This is, this has got to be the shadow dice because when we were looking at it in the game, he was, he was low on sixes. 
Um, and I was high on sixes, though often the difference between sixes and fives for free people doesn't matter. I think there might be some bug here. Um, I can double check it, but I'm pretty sure that these are the actual shadow combat dice numbers with 169, and these are the free people um, combat dice numbers. So I guess that's a good thing to keep in mind. I don't know why it's flipped. If anybody knows why this is flipped, uh, let me know. But clearly this should be, with 169, this should be shadow. So he was a little bit low on sixes, but given... Um, Given the attacks that happened, this ended up, uh, the plus five on fives ended up balancing out pretty well for him. All right, that's the game. Thanks so much.